Welcome, movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, where it's a dishonor just to be nominated. I'm Matt Presents, joined, as always, by my totally wizard co-host... Misa Mackle Shadackle. That feels weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, joining us today, our very special guest, the first guest we've had on the show. Please introduce yourself. Hello, I am Olivia, also known as the Archivist on Smash Pack. It is an honor to be the first guest on Hollow Victories. I did not realize that. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> this is only sixth, seventh episode. Seventh. Pretty early in the series. Yeah. Seventh. Wait, maybe eighth. Wait, because we did... S yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, August, September. Yeah, this is the eighth episode. Seven, November, yeah, no, no. I think it's the seventh. I'll look it up later. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we say in big doo-doo this time because our, our matchup is two follow-ups to franchises started by the lovely and infamous George Lucas. It's Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace versus Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And Olivia, yes. would you like to introduce Phantom Menace for us? Of course. So Phantom Menace, or Star Wars Episode One, was the return to the franchise after, oh God, about almost 20 years, almost, give or take a bit. And this set up the prequel, so introducing us to characters like young Anakin Skywalker and y young Obi-Wan Kenobi, as well as a whole slew of new characters, including, but not limited to, Qui-Gon Jinn and Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> the best Star Wars character. The, the best Star Wars character. <laughs> um, I found him less irritating this go-through, I gotta say. Yeah. I found him more irritating because I didn't remember anything except like one or two lines from when I was a kid. And I was like, oh no, he talks a lot more than I remember him talking. They do shut him up occasionally though. He, they do shut him up. I kind of get his character. It's like, oh, you have like such straight faced normal characters in this movie. So having like one really wacky character in there, I get it. I, I would do something similar. It's just Jar Jar isn't funny to me, so, and he isn't funny to a lot of people, so I think that's just where the big problem comes in. I, I think the thing is, is even Jar no one in universe, except for small children, think Jar Jar is funny. <laughs> so, it's like, even the universe acknowledges that Jar Jar is annoying, so... They tone him down in the other two, don't they? Yes. Uh, they, they tone him down significantly in the second one, and he is, like, not in the third one at all. I don't know if he even has one line. He actually does. Does he? Okay. I All I, I remember so. him doing in that is like being at Padme's funeral. Spoilers if you haven't seen episode three. But Damn you. It's, it's Star Wars. So eh. like, if you haven't seen episode three, that's your fault. I was going to say, it's <laughs> been out long enough. <laughs> also, she's not in the original trilogy. So like, right. what did you expect? No, oh, yeah, exactly. Which is a problem I have with a lot of sequels. It's less of a problem, I think, in this movie. It's it, it starts to be a problem by, like, the third one. And you have these fights between the Emperor and Yoda. And it's like, yeah, but I know they're both gonna survive. Yeah, mm. I guess, like, I, I feel that. I feel yeah. that. It can be very rough making an interest in prequel. Um, I... In terms of, like, the ones I've seen, the only one that ever struck me as, like, really good, like, I really like it, is Better Call Saul. Um, and that's just because there are characters in that series where they don't appear in Breaking Bad, but why? Also, the main character in, like, you know, Saul Goodman he, in Breaking Bad, his ending's kind of... Eh, you don't really know what happens to him, so they can kind of do something with him. With a movie like this where you know where, like, characters are gonna go... Yeah, I agree. It, it's a, li a little underwhelming when you, like, set up this fight, like, oh, will this happen? Will they make it out or not? And it's like, you know they do. <laughs> I I do not think... I, I think it avoids a lot of the tropes so many prequels do fall into, like, over-explaining the most mundane details. Yeah. You know, I don't care where Wolverine got his jacket from. I assume he just bought the jacket at a store. <laughs> 
that's where most people get their jackets. I don't need a backstory <laughs> for that. It'd be funny if like one of these movies, came, a movie came out like it was a prequel where they did do that, but they treated it like it was the most. It was like it was something really mundane. Like that, yeah, they bought it at a, a grocery store, at a regular <laughs> store, but they're still giving it like this really inspiring music. Like as he's like taking it to the register and getting it scanned, like really inspiring music. And it's like the most. It's even like down like where the cashier's like struggling to get the tag. Like kind of like wait, wait, I gotta scan it again. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh yeah, it just drags <laughs> on. Uh, it, even Star Wars, I feel, has fallen prone to that with uh, Solo, a Star Wars story. Now they. Yeah, have. I would because yes. there was something like upon revisiting this, like because it. Um, I was watching it and I'm like, wow, they really don't like they got yeah, once in a while they'll go like, hey, this is like something you should remember from the first set of movies, you know, kind of that wink, wink, nudge, nudge type stuff. But it wasn't like that bad, you know, nowadays, everything like like you said, like in Solo, it's always like such like a big deal, you know, like when, hey, remember this or like, yeah, like or like episode. Oh, my God. The um, episode seven had that a lot too yeah well the only yeah, thing that um, like episode one seems to do want to do a lot in terms of that is just showing look at anakin he's a really good kid he wants to help these people with no like with no self-gain his mom is literally a virgin who, who gave birth to him it's just like Jesus. he is the most perfect child <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i i think the place where it gets really bad is just like that all of these characters just knew each other before episode four. Like, like R2 and C3PO, it's like, that's a little ridiculous. Like, Anakin built C3PO. Yeah. Like, what What are the odds? What are the odds that he would end up back in the care of Anakin's son? No, yeah. I, decades later. I couldn't remember if there was any reference to the, like him making them in the original movies, because I'm not like a Star Wars nut or anything. So I, I was just trying to think, did they? So, I, I don't think that. Like, I don't think they do because, I, I, again, spoiler alert, at the end of episode three, they wipe 3PO's memory. So he doesn't remember Anakin or any of that. They just seem obsessed like, with putting these guys in. Like, they're in fucking Rogue yeah. One. They're in the sequel trilogy. Like, it's just... Were they in the Han Solo movie? I didn't see it. They were oh not my. in Solo. Yeah, they were not. So that is the only Star Wars movie to date where they do not appear. Wow. Oh, sorry, I cut you off, Olivia. Go ahead. I didn't. No, you're fine. I yeah, I just realized that. I was like, wow, yeah, they weren't referenced in that. But um, but yeah, the only per the only canonical character that remembers all of the movies and has lived through everything is technically R two. <laughs> but he doesn't talk, so he <laughs> he's anything, just keeping so this shit to himself. <laughs> yeah, the only one that talks is the Cleveland Brown version of R two D two. How come Family Guy never did the pre? They probably will eventually. You know what it was? Them. They 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 like they flat out blatantly said they were going to do it on the Cleveland show. Then the Cleveland show got canceled, and then Disney bought Star Wars, so that was a big no no. But now Disney owns Family Guy too, so maybe they will do it now. That's a really good mm. question. I wonder. I seriously wonder if they will, because just like just kind of like the way Star Wars is now, I don't know if they're gonna. I don't know if they're gonna open that can of worms. They might. They might, they might let Family Guy do it. I don't know. I don't know if Disney respects Family Guy. They're, Family Guy is not on Disney Plus. Some I do is. not feel like they do. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're getting off topic. Yes, sorry. <laughs> uh, episode one, I a lot happens in this movie. Like I'm, yeah. I'm sitting there watching it, and I'm like, I forgot how much shit happens in this movie. Same. And. An observation I made the last time I watched this is it's sort of paced like a video game. Mm-hmm. You'll have, like, like the cut scenes and then the action scenes. Mm -hmm. and And then you'll have, like, side quests in side quests. Like, oh, the ship's broken down. We gotta get parts. Oh, we don't have money mm -hmm. for the parts. Oh, Anakin's gotta win this pod race to get the parts. And Yeah, it's just, like, kind of, like, boom, 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 you know? Uh, it, it is 
fast paced. I'll give it that much. Mm -hmm. Well, by all means, this movie should not be boring to me because you're right. It's moving so fast. And I visually, I don't think it's that bad. I think, you know, obviously a lot of the CG is outdated, but the thing that I commented on is so often they'll have scenes where they're not using the CG and you just see like, you know, the, the sets and the, the props and the costumes. It's like, okay, this looks like old Star Wars. This looks neat. And then with the scenes with the heavy CGI, it's almost all CGI. So it's just like watching an animated film. Like it's most of the time I'm okay with it visually. And I think the pacing is like really, you know, <laughs> really ADHD friendly. It's very fast paced, but I still get, I got so bored. I, I, I admitted it when we were watching that I fell asleep for 10 minutes and I did go back and rewatch those parts, but I actually fell asleep when we watched this one. And I think it's just the I think it is one hundred percent the characters. Well, you also woke up at like five a.m. and did yeah, a long that's shift. true. Yeah, and I gotta say because like for me, like rewatching this because this was actually this was my first because this is the we watched the uncut version, right? Like no, because no, I think this really? is the original. I don't know. I couldn't tell you because I think because the theatrical release or like. like like when I was okay, well, the last time I saw for context, the last time I saw this, I was pro was like back when it was on VHS, and I know there were scenes in there that I have not seen either before or in a very long time. I am assuming this because like, there was some context, there's some scenes that provided context, and I'm sitting there like, oh, that was actually really nice. I could have used that the first go around, you know, watching that, but. It just, but yeah, it moves at like it's abs. The pacing is absolutely like it's just like it's very fast. I was actually really impressed because it did not feel like because the version we watched was like two hours and like sixteen minutes. It did not feel like two hours and sixteen minutes. Mm, I kind of felt it. I I felt it too, but it's okay. Like I, so, to recap what we said last episode. Matt, I believe, does not like this movie. I'm just neutral on Star Wars as a whole. I'm not a fan of the series. But Olivia, you actually do enjoy this movie. Would you say that you still enjoy it? I did. Like, I, I can't lie. Like, I, uh, you know, I still, I still kind of, I still like this movie. I can't find a reason to hate it. Like, I do look back at it now and go like, ooh, yeah, that didn't age so good, you know, or like. You know, stuff like, yeah. like, or I'll go like, oh, yeah, I can see where this is really, really boring. Because, yeah, a lot of it is political talk. A lot of it is just he talking heads, you know. You know, the political stuff doesn't bother me. It's It really isn't that because I, I've seen, I've watched movies with that where I'm fine with that. And the action scenes are still there. That freaking pod racing scene goes on for like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Holy shit. I got so tired of that fucking scene. <laughs> yeah, the pod racing scene did go on, a, did drag a bit. Honestly, I, I hated it less this time than the last time I watched it. I believe the last time I watched this was right before episode 7 came out. I watched all of them leading into episode 7. Uh, but I've seen this movie actually, like, a lot. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Which is maybe exposing a bit of a bias here. I, I've watched I watched this movie repeatedly as a kid. I watched all of the Star Wars movies repeatedly as a kid. Like at, at least once a year I would watch all six of them. Okay, not that much. Six. <laughs> <laughs> but uh Crystal Skull, I saw once when it came out and I haven't seen it since. So Yeah, same. <laughs> confession of a bias there. We well, watch it again for this episode, but we always yeah. do that. Well, yeah. Well, do, you know yes. what? Actually, I'm thinking about it. I watched it once of on my own volition after it came out, and then once, uh, maybe twice. It was the film that they put on in school for us to watch when this, there was a sub. <laughs> so once for sure out of my own volition. Well, technically twice now because we re rewatched it, and then I think twice for not of my own volition. <laughs> I saw all three of the original Star Wars movies as a kid. I, uh, I mean, the prequel trilogy and the original three as a kid. There's no question in my mind that was that shit was on all the time, and I remember specific shots from it. But um, Indiana Jones, we'll get to that one, but not really. I saw the first one as a kid, and that's about it. Um, but yeah, my, going back to what I was saying though is like. I think there is a lot to appreciate about this movie. I kind of get why people like it, and I kind of get why people hate it. For me, 
Honestly, I would have been able to enjoy this movie if the characters just weren't so fucking flat to me. You have, okay, like, the Emperor is still pretty good. Uh, Yoda is still pretty good. You have, like, a couple of characters in there that I think work still. Even, like, I'm not a big fan of C-3PO or, you know, R2-D2. I think they're pretty simple, but they they feel like themselves in this movie. If you like them in the first movies, you'll like them in this. But it's just our main characters have the same expression and the same tone throughout the entire movie. Um... And I just that, that I got so I got so bored of them. I, I was so uninterested in them the entire time. That is my number one problem with this movie. What do you guys think of the acting in this movie? Um, Oof. yeah. <laughs> if okay, if we're gonna talk about the acting in this movie, I think we need to address the massive elephant in the room, which is that two of the actors from this film have suffered serious mental trauma. For their involvement in it. Did they? Uh, Ahmed Best, who played Jar Jar, and Jake Lloyd, who played Anakin. I know about Anakin. That kid doesn't... Does that? That is not the kid's fault. That is the director's fault. That is 100% well, not I, I don't even think he's that bad. I think he's pretty good for a child actor. There's one or two moments where he's like, okay, you, you could have pepped that up a bit. But I think he's pretty decent for a child actor. For a child actor, yeah. He, he had more personality than Obi-Wan. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking of, I, it's so funny you should say that, I was thinking about that, I was like, wow, Obi, for Obi-Wan being such like a badass character in like later stuff, he gets nothing in this movie. Yeah. He gets jack shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. This is like, weirdly like Qui-Gon's movie. It really is. Qui-Gon is the central character, and then he dies and is not in the rest of the series. And they don't talk about him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was shocked at how little the Jedi Council was in this movie. Yoda and Mace Windu have, like, three scenes. Yeah, which is, like, <laughs> for how much Star Wars loves to shove their Jedi into everything, yeah, it was a bit surprising, like, how little they I guess, were here. I guess I'm thinking of the other two where they play a much bigger role. Yeah. But I, I was surprised at how little they actually did in this movie. So I know that um, Jar Jar is not a beloved character. He's one of the most complained about characters. Granted, he is a me- memorable character, and no one can ever take that away from them. But why did the why did like the, so the actor got a lot of shit for that? Yeah, uh, really yeah, bad stuff. You know, honestly, yeah. got it happened to Rose too, didn't it? Like Rose's actor yeah. in the Last Jedi. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think Star Wars I'm... fans are nuts. Star Wars fans are nuts. They are they are scary. Um, and yeah, like the guy who played Jar Jar Binks, this poor man. It like Jar Jar Binks ruined his life because he like he got like death threats and crap, you know, for before mm. being Jar Jar. You understand that someone else would have done it if it wasn't him, right, guys? Like it's it, no one, no one could have made this character work. You could have put the yeah. funniest actor in that role, and it wouldn't have worked. If yeah, Richard it, Pryor were Jar Jar, it wouldn't work. No, yeah, there's no way to play Jar Jar with any semblance of dignity or any way to make him any less annoying. He was just specifically crafted to be as annoying as fucking possible. Excuse me, I sorry. I can do it. <laughs> We're allowed to well, curse. Okay, yeah, my, my, oh, okay, Mike, Michael could play Jar Jar. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's the only one. Yeah. Um, yes, I can see it now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Uh, mo- I can't even blame most of the actors for this. Like, there's really talented actors in this movie, and they just give you nothing. No, oh, yeah. Like, how do you how do you make Samuel L. Jackson this bland? Yeah. yeah. Like, and it's like, and I get like this is, and I get that this is a very young like Natalie Portman, but still, she was pretty experienced by this point, you know, even as an act, you know, as an actress, and she's way mm-hmm. like toned down, you know. Yeah. 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 Let I me mean, like. I'm gonna like, Liam Neeson as Qui Gon. I don't know. I kind of feel like this is just Liam Neeson's default setting. I don't know. I don't see enough of his work. So. <laughs> I thought that with. Here's the thing. There's a likability to the character. There's something there that could work. It's just so dry, and I don't think it's 100% the actor's fault. I think a lot of it's the script. Yeah. But, man, I, I wanted to like him. I really did. I just I, I was so disinterested in him and Obi-Wan. So They were so boring to me. I, I There's stuff I like about Qui-Gon, but he is generally just a very flat character. He doesn't get enough to do despite 
sort of being the central figure of the movie. Yeah. No, I agree. Cause yeah, but cause yeah, like he moved, he drives the whole plot because he's the one who finds like Anakin and is like this kid, this kid right here, <laughs> you know, he's the chosen one, <laughs> and he's in charge of all this crap. But yeah, he's very like he's very subdued. But you can, but they talk like so much about like him doing his own thing and like not listening to the council and stuff. And then you're like, this sounds. Like a very different person going around like kicking ass and taking names kind of thing, you know. But <laughs> then we get, but then we see Qui Gon Jinn, you know, being shady and shit. Yeah, yeah. we do. They they kind of talk him up in a way that the character never really delivers on. Yeah, know? exactly. Like, oh, you have Qui Gon strong headedness, and it's like, when is Qui Gon strong headed? When did that happen? <laughs> We need a, a prequel to the prequels that's just about Qui-Gon. Right. Oh, I was going to say, I will say um, Senator Palpatine is one of the, he is one of the characters that has more personality. And I got to admit, like, it's probably just because, of, like, you know, obviously spoilers, like, he's the bad guy. Mm -hmm. That I find him so damn entertaining. He's also one of the few people who is played by their original actor, right? Yeah. yeah, he knows this role, and he can make it work because of how and they can make it work despite like how many years it's been, because you know how, how, what he looked like in episode you know six. Yeah, he he was in yeah. heavy makeup in the old movies, it so works. they're like, yeah, just bring that same actor back. He's still young. No, oh, yeah, and it worked, and it's like, and yeah, and he just is like, so like when he shows up, you're like, oh, okay, this is cool, you know. <laughs> in what little he is in yeah exactly <laughs> because at least i guess this is the thing is he's the live one of the liveliest people in this performance so you can't help but be like oh hey you're back you know i gotta yeah. say also it, it was, was also it was a little bit of it was a bit refreshing to see him go ahead olivia no i was just gonna say can i also just say it was kind of a trip because i did not remember darth maul actually having a speaking role i think that's why i think this is a different cut than what i saw as a child Cause that whole scene where he talks to the to the emp well to Palpatine, I'm like sitting there like, wait, you talk, <gasps> you know? <laughs> yeah, he he does not talk a whole lot, but he does say a few lines. It's just kind of sick is, garbage, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, which almost like he doesn't say anything terribly important, and so I feel like his character would be better if he just said nothing. I think that's that's one thing, yeah, because, like, for me as a kid, Darth Maul made such an impact on me. Like, I remember just being like, I don't know what this dude is, I don't know what his deal is, but I am scared now. You know, this is, this is badass. Like, I remember when, like... Character design. Yeah, like, I remember when I went back and, like, my like my aunt and uncle let me borrow um, the VHSs for the original uh, Star Wars movies. And, like, Darth Vader shows up, and, like, these kids, like, I know I'm telling them about it, and they're like, oh, that man, Darth Vader's so scary. And I'm like, what? No. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he is a, he's a, he's a big tin man. I don't care about that. I'm more, it's like, are you concerned with the fucking devil in the first movie? <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, this man is Satan. Well, I, mean, I guess it wasn't so scary when he got, you know, when he dies, but, you know. <laughs> he's a little he's a little less intimidating than when he's yeah first. yeah significantly less <laughs> <laughs> um yeah everybody really likes Darth Maul it's it's like one of the few things that this film seemed to accomplish with like everybody because it's pretty like it seems to be pretty mutual that people think Darth Maul, Maul is cool they might not like him necessarily in this movie but there's something out there with this character that fans of the series enjoy the character so like this movie created a Created a Star Wars character that people really like, at the very least. You know what else people universally love about this movie? What? What's that? The fucking soundtrack. Yeah. Both of these movies, as as much as people hate these two movies, John Williams fucking brought it for both of these movies. Yeah. Um. He. Uh, yeah. That's the true. The music in uh, in Crystal Skull and Phantom Menace is undeniably well done. <laughs> No, it really is. Like, there is some... This, there was a class act right there for both of them. It's almost a shame sometimes. I mean, like, okay, episode <laughs> one, like I said, I don't even... I don't even hate, I don't even hate it. I just... Uh, it was it was just more or less... 
boring to me. Uh, but like Crystal Skull, it's like, oh man, such a such wasted time, <laughs> such wasted <laughs> talent. There, here's the thing: there's one or two moments in this movie that I just hate, and everything else, I'm like, yeah, I can live with this. Mm-hmm. Like it's not, it's not great. It's not the original Star Wars. A lot of it's too long. A lot of it's really flat. But there's just like one or two moments at that really stick in my mind. Mostly Jar Jar, Jar Jar stepping in shit, or yeah. that thing that farts at Jar Jar. Yeah, yeah. But that was honest. That was kind of honestly the worst this movie had to offer. Yeah. Over, it's like, I don't know. Overall, it was just like, well, not. To, nah, I'll save my generals generalizations, but you know. I haven't revisited episode two in a little while, but I've I've always maintained that this one is definitely worse than episode two, and I would wa- I wonder if I would still think that, but because to me episode two was doing something where episode one kind of wasn't. I can see your point there. So, there's, episode there's one's just saying a fan again. Film. And it, even it, even outside of Jar Jar, you've got like. Watto, I think, is kind of mm. not okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. D- ditto, ditto, the kind of racist Chinese aliens. Both of those are oh, the- off-putting to me. <laughs> yeah, the Trade Federation. The A lot of the... I've, is it okay? Is it just me or is also like... I kind of find Sebulba to be a little questionable. Like the Doug species... To be a little questionable too. Yeah. The f- yeah, and then yes, then so between the Trade Federation, Jar Jar, like the Gungans, the the Dugs, and then what's the one called? <sighs> oh my God, what was the one you just brought it up? Watto. Watto. Yeah. Know what species is called. Yeah, Watto. Yeah, they. Yeah. Um, I kind of enjoyed the pod race and um a- aliens you got to see. Um, but then you have to watch pod racing for 10 minutes, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it just goes on and on. And and the I, rules seem, like, totally weird and <laughs> arbitrary. Yeah, the, it, what rules? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I gotta say, I think... I think, I think the, Rule number I think one like, about pod racing. Sorry, go ahead. Don't talk about pod racing. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I think, I think my favorite thing is the sound effects that a lot of these aliens made. <laughs> like I gotta admit, like a couple of them, like right before they died, they let out really neat little death, cr- little noises, and I was like, yeah, I don't know what that. I like that noise. I don't know why, but I find it really uh, appealing. <laughs> it's creative. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, like the like the designs of the aliens are creative. I thought the two headed one that was doing the announcements. I thought that one had a really ugly design, but the racers themselves, I thought were creative. I liked looking at them. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. I like the announcers. I think that's it's funny that they have like one speaking in a, an alien language and one that's just like an Earth sports oh, I like, commentator. Yeah. I like that too. I just don't like their faces. Like I, I it's like I, I feel like the, they they look the roughest out of all of the like CG aliens in this movie. They just because the others like they there's like I said they're it's not like necessarily that they always blend in super well, but like they just have kind of like fun designs to go with them where those are just like something about the way their faces were animated. Just, it looked really like it looked less professional than the other ones. I guess is the best way I could put it. It looked a lot rougher. They look like ants. Like, you know, that like the nineties movie ants that came out like around <laughs> the same time as bugs life. They look like yeah. those. There's just no other way to yeah. put it. And I think it's just like because the comparison of they have really, really gro- almost grotesquely big heads on long noodly necks with long noodly arms. It just creates this, I don't know what the word is, but this dissonance, you know, in their design. <laughs> For me, it was mainly just the faces, though. It was mainly just the faces that were, were just like, man, this is really rough. Yeah, they're, they're rather off-putting, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... But yeah, no, like there's some there's some good creativity in the movie. There's some like nice looking shots in the movie. There's I let shot where they're swimming into the underground sit the underwater city. I think that's an amazing shot. I love that shit. I remembered that from when I was a kid and rewatched. I was like, that's that's a really cool idea. I like how when they enter, the water is just kind of standing still on its own, and you just kind of walk through it like it's an entrance. It's like that 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 to me is a cool visual. I like stuff like that. There is. 
there is something that I, 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 there is something to appreciate about the movie, but it's just the things that hold it back do hold hold me back from enjoying it. Where at like, you know, in previous episodes, something like Tank Girl or Book of Henry, despite their flaws, I can actually enjoy them quite a bit. Okay, I feel that. I feel that. I just because like, I don't know, like. There's a lot like uh, visually about this movie. Like I, I still remember. But it's, like, probably just because I watched it so much as a kid. Because, like, yeah, I remembered a lot more of the beginning than I thought I would. The droids really stuck with me. Like, um, it's, like, that's, like, I, t- I think I, I'm, I think I even mentioned it, like, when we were uh, watching it. I was, like, the scene of the droids coming out onto the battlefield and, like, powering all up in, like, their little squads. I was, like, I rem- still remember that to this day. Yeah, you know, I agree with you. I, I actually really like the robot designs i really like i i I like yeah i I like the droids i like them a lot in this actually um i like that they kind of found something to do instead of stormtroopers too like i i I like that they create like they designed all this new stuff so yeah it's honestly they may have made more more like new assets than the sequel series did because the sequels wanted to use a lot of memorabilia from the (laughs) original trilogy like you yeah. got the stormtroopers there. You you got some new creatures and designs too, and it's it's really cool. And I think presentation wise, the sequel trilogy does a better job. But uh, but to be fair, it's all these years later, so the CG's improved, and they just took some notes and decided to make more practical shit to throw into. That's true. Yeah, it is better that they have the practical shit in the sequels. But I don't think the CG is that awful when you take into account when this came out I yeah, there is no. definitely worse cg from after this yeah definitely, and we're gonna definitely we're gonna, i and to me honestly the cg even though it is dated a lot of it doesn't like hurt the scenes sometimes because it's kind of trying to create this sci-fi world and again some of the scenes genuinely just look like i said this already it looks like a scene out of an animated film but there's so much of it that it actually does kind of blend together at times Whereas, like, a movie that we're going to be talking about very soon, I genuinely think some of the special effects ruin what the film is going for. One, because the other three movies didn't do that, and two, just because it's, yeah, it it just looks, it's not blending together well at all, and it looks awful. It's, like, killing the fun of the scene. I think that, uh, you know, as someone who's not a big fan of Star Wars, I can say this. I watched the original three movies right before going to see Episode Seven. I enjoyed them, but I was not in love with them, and I don't ever really want to watch them again. Um, then I watched episode seven. I had a good time. I watched episode eight. I had a good time. I skipped nine. I might watch it one day, but it doesn't seem like it, that one's pretty universal. People don't like even people who like the sequel trilogy don't like episode nine. And to be fair, something like this, the prequel trilogy, it seems like there was at least a semi consistent plan with it. If I'm wrong about that, correct me. I know that they made changes after well, episode one, but I mean, the sequel trilogy was a mess with changes. Yeah, this is clearly George Lucas's vision. The prequel trilogy is George Lucas's vision, whereas the sequels get real bogged down in like switching back and forth between directors. And, it's and Disney's involvement, interference. Yeah, it's like, like Disney's watching over this. Yeah, where this... when when Lucas was making this, it's like, oh, he made the original Star Wars. Let's just let him do it. Which is probably the biggest flaw of the prequels is that they just let George Lucas do whatever he wanted. It's yeah. just a bunch of yes men telling him, yeah, do that when well, someone well, Matt, you... really needed to tell him no. <laughs> We well, pointed out when we were watching it, like uh, what he wanted to make Yoda <laughs> originally. <laughs> yes, in episode five, George Lucas was planning on making Yoda a monkey wearing a mask. Oh my god! And a production, someone on the production was like, "No, George, that's a bad idea." And Thank God for that person. <laughs> they were right. And Yoda's so, a very memorable character. Good job. It's good to work with people sometimes. It's here's the thing. It's good to I think it is a good thing to get in your own head and make your own thing that's purely something that be, like belongs to you. I think that is a good thing to do. Maybe don't do it with your super popular and beloved seer franchise. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> make make a new movie, you know? Yeah. Um the 
Oh, yeah, the point I was getting to, though, is, like, so, you know, sequel trilogy, original trilogy, I, I'm pretty, like, I like them. I think they're fun. I, I don't hate the sequels like a lot of people do. I know there's a lot of people defend them, too, though, so it's not all hatred. I like them. Episode one, I'm going to say, is a little worse. To me, it's a little, like, worse than all of those. I, I, I do like it less. I, I th- Those, like, other five movies I mentioned... I don't love them, but they're pretty entertaining. I just don't plan on rewatching them. Episode one, I get why someone might enjoy it, but I personally don't. Yeah, no. I I do enjoy both the original trilogy and the sequels. And I I don't hate the prequels. Episode one is probably the one I hate the most. But yeah. Uh, uh, this will probably be the last time I watch episode one. <laughs> Unless it has to go up against another movie if it wins. It could lose. We don't know yet. I'm just gonna, like, I'm just gonna say, I still, yeah, it does not, like, yeah, I see a lot of the problems with it and stuff, but I still, I still like this movie. I don't know why. It could just be nostalgia, but I just. That's fine. Yeah, I still enjoy episode one. I probably would still enjoy the rest of the prequels. Um, and I, I definitely, I enjoy the original Star Wars. I enjoy the sequels, except well, except I have a f- few issues with, I, I have all the issues with episode nine. But it's like, it's like, but yeah, I just... I don't know. I think part of my problem is also I'm just getting a little I'm I'm a, get, getting a little tired of Star Wars, but that's a whole nother that's a whole nother can't thing, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I understand why you like it, and I I have to admit there is I do have some nostalgic feelings for the prequels. Um, more Episode two and three than one. I was a little young when one came out, but I I like I really remember the marketing around two. Right, I, I remember seeing Count Dooku and Yoda all over the store yeah. when 2 came out. I remember the Burger <laughs> King toys. I remember a lot of promos for the third one, actually. Um, I used to read, like, I remember, like, Nickelodeon magazine, because I, I, I would oh, read yeah. that as a kid. They did so much shit when episode 3 was, uh, was coming out. Um, it's like, because I, I remember, like, I remember driving... Um, past my local zoo and they had a uh, a banner on the top of the building for Star Wars episode 3 and I just so yeah like I remember I remember the marketing I remember the hype and like I remember like I remember like kids I knew like being like super stoked about this and me just being like I don't know what's going on but I guess I'm getting involved you know <laughs> oh well I suppose if it, do you have Either of you have anything else to say about episode one? I think we covered it pretty well. I think we did. Yep. All right. This might be the longest we ever talked about one movie, honestly. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to say, and I feel like we're going to have a lot less to say about this next film. (laughs) And and we do have a guest. We have a guest. Yeah. That is also part of it. Guests do inflate Uh, the time. (laughs) So, uh, the, the other movie we watched was Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull from 2000. Eight? I think it was 08, not 06. I may be wrong about that. Okay, 2008. It is the fourth Indiana Jones movie, following up on Last Crusade some 19 years later, almost 20 years. Yeah. Um, in this one, Indiana Jones is fighting the Soviet Union, who are trying to collect the... are trying to collect a crystal skull that will lead them to like a lost city of treasure um (laughs) and and along the way indy meets mutt williams who spoilers is his son (gasps) um it is the crystal skull is a real mythological thing uh that popped up Sometime in the 30s, people started, like, someone made a skull out of crystal and was like, ooh, this is an Indian artifact, and no, it wasn't, but the the myth stuck around. Even mm-hmm. this movie, like, acknowledges that crystal skull and is like, yeah, but that one's fake. The one we have is real. <laughs> 
Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> and you, like, I knew... Crystal Skull's a stupid movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's more <laughs> I, okay. than I think I would say about it. Okay, I will give it this. At least I was, unlike Star Wars, where you're just, I was just kind of sitting and watching it and being like, yeah, okay. At least I was entertained. I was right. ripped in it pretty hard with you guys. Yeah, we I, were I, we I, were ragging I, on it pretty hard. I was having a good time watching this one. It's it's like it is. I think I think it's really fucking bad, especially go, going off the first and second one. And I didn't watch the entire third one, honestly, just being completely transparent. But I, I don't. I Matt gave me some information about it. I feel like I was pretty well prepared for Indiana Jones four. Um, man, I just. <laughs> I believe this one fucking sucked compared to the first two. Oh, oh, <laughs> definitely. I feel like there are very specific stupid moments and just like broader stupid things, like the the part with the fridge, the fridge getting nuked. Stupid. Yeah. Uh, the, the the stuff with the ants was kind of <laughs> dumb. The fact that it oh is about aliens and that mm. Indiana Jones' son is in it, I think are also kind of stupid. But overall, I found this movie mostly boring. I think it was the opening scene is fast is like kind of fascinating with how like ridiculous it gets and then it's boring for like 40 minutes, but like somewhat like a semi-competent Indiana Jones movie, like the sets are still pretty good. There's still like a miss there's still a mystery. There's still a treasure. So it's like, okay, this is an Indiana Jones movie. And then when it gets to that fucking chase scene, it, it from there on, it's just a lot of fun to me because from there it gets really stupid. It gets it goes from boring to really fucking stupid, and it doesn't ever leave that realm of stupid. It just gets it. It is just a really dumb movie from that point on. But I had a lot of fun watching it and making fun of it. I gotta back you up a little bit on this one where, like, yeah, I, I, you know, actually, this, unfortunately, this is the only Indiana Jones movie I've seen all the way through. Huh. And, yeah, I don't, I don't know how that happened. I'm not 100% sure myself. Like, I know I've seen a good chunk of three, a good chunk of one. I don't think I've seen the second one. And then, but somehow, some way, I ended up watching this one the whole way through. It's. It is at least like it 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 does exist in this realm of of stupid that is very fun to te- like to rag on and it does like it does get what it's doing it does understand like I am an Indiana Jones film and these are the beats I have to hit and like this is like the adventure movie feel we're going for and it, it understood the assignment and it, it did it <laughs> but not but I don't know you know <laughs> yeah no it, it feels Kind of like it's going through the motions. It's it's it does the stuff the other movies do, but less good. Uh, Michael kind of touched on this earlier, but like stuff that would have been crazy practical shit in the originals is CG in this one. It's yeah. trying to go so much bigger than the other three, and as a result of relying on the CG to make it bigger than like life, make it bigger than anything you could do, it does the exact opposite. It makes everything look really fucking lame. It makes everything look like it was shot in a single room. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just, it's really lame compared to the others. I did not love Indiana Jones, the first one. I When I, I watched the, you know, I saw it as a kid. I rewatched it for this episode and I watched episode, and I watched uh, um, Temple of Doom. And then I, the Last Crusade I started watching, all of, I liked the opening of The Last Crusade a lot, and I will finish it. I actually will just... I, I watched all of them. I'm going to finish three. Um, I didn't want to finish it in time for this episode because I, I just started a fucking new job in the middle <laughs> in between episodes, so um, I got busy. But uh, first one, I I like it. it. It's not my favorite. It's not my favorite thing. I get why a lot of people like it. I almost appreciate it more than I love it. But you know what? Very well shot, very well acted, a lot of charm, a lot of personality, great sets, um, really fun actions. I mean, really fun action scenes. It, it's a good movie. No no denying that it's a good movie. Uh, Temple of Doom, I think it just kind of gets... <laughs> I, I, Matt, I, I know how you feel about it, Matt. That one just gets me more. It's so ridiculous. It's so fucking ridiculous, and I had so much fun watching it. Even though <laughs> it's probably objectively a worse movie. <laughs> But I just had such a good time with it. 
And the first 30 minutes of the last crusade were looking pretty promising. Um, four born in some areas so bad. It's good in others for me. That, that there's I, my recap. Uh, I, I did rewatch one and three for this. Cause I rewatched temple of doom a couple months ago. I didn't like Temple of Doom as a kid, and upon a rewatch, I'm like, yeah, I still don't like this. Although I definitely like it more than Crystal Skull, because, like, at, at least when that movie is doing... When that movie is bad, it's entertainingly bad. I don't think this movie is nearly as entertainingly bad as Temple of Doom. Uh, but the the first one I rewatched, and I'm like, damn, this is way more fun than I remember, even. Like, it's it's just... A fun, fast-paced little movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, I I didn't enjoy Last Crusade as much as I remembered, but I still thought it was a really good movie. So yeah, all all three of them I would say are far more entertaining than this. That opening scene in three, where it's just like a action scene that takes place on like the circus train. I thought that was a really creative and fun sequence. I I actually liked it a lot. With uh, Young River Indian Phoenix. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was a fan of that. I, I, I personally enjoyed that scene a lot. Um, I suppose <laughs> we have not addressed uh, the the young actor in this movie, Mr. Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Mutt Williams. Lurking in the shadows. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> <laughs> Good actor, not in this, and not in a lot of the stuff he's in. It, it, it's a weird thing with Shia LaBeouf, but, I mean, even recently, Pieces of a Woman, 2020, uh, good movie. He he was really good in that movie, too. He can be a great actor, but he can also be a, a actor in some really ridiculous movies like this or Transformers, you, you name it. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't think he was, like, awful in this or anything, but he's not good in it either. It's just you a know, stupid script. It's not fun. Go ahead, Olivia. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say honestly, I think I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut uh, Mr. LaBeouf some slack here. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that this was, you know, that I'm gonna blame the writing in this one because like you see what yeah. kind of character Mutt's supposed to be. You get what they're going for, and honestly, it could be entertaining. And he's got decent like banter with like. You know, him and, like, Indy have an interesting dynamic. Yeah. But the problem is, is once you find out he's Indy's son, the dynamic shifts. Like, well, we really don't, well, it's like, it would have, well, it would have shifted, but they just totally kind of sidelined Mutt. You know? I I, they yeah. do that. I think the lines when Indy is, like, finds out he's his son and he is, like, trying to go along with actually being a father figure, that cracked me up because that seems so fucking out of character for him, how he responds to that. They're doing it for the joke. They're trying to make, it's, like, something that's supposed to be funny, but it's making me laugh. It is making me laugh, but it's not making me laugh for the reasons they want to make it laugh. It's making me laugh because it feels like a complete betrayal of the character that he would react that way. That's <laughs> um, true. Yeah, no, as soon as, uh, shit, Miriam shows up, whatever Indy had going on with Mutt gets completely sidelined and Miriam becomes the the main sidekick. Yeah. Yeah, no, she does. And it's like, and it's like, and that's, you know, and that's fine, but we didn't need to, like, if they were going to do that, they really, Mutt wasn't super necessary or they really needed to divide their time better between Mutt and Marion because... The three of them then could have had this interesting dynamic of like, you know, the back. There's a lot of potential there, but they the movie just did not have the time or energy to like even try to go into that. They had to go get that skull back, you know? Yeah. You're not supposed to use the same sidekick twice, guys. <gasps> it's breaking the rules. Well, there, <laughs> there is a line in there where... He's like, oh, I, I, there were some other girls, but they all had the same problem. They weren't you. And I'm like, is that a joke on how, like, no one really likes the love interests from the other two movies? <laughs> the one and two is... It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> the one and two is so bad. 
Oh, yeah, she's the worst part of the movie. Yeah. It's actually, but it's kind of funny to me. That's, like, the thing. I like it. It's so bad, it's good. Like, that's a part. There's parts about two that I think are unironically good and ironically good. And her, like, not learning a single fucking thing by the end of the movie is funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> now you see why that one didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it is a very toxic relationship that they are continuing. <laughs> Jeez, what else in this movie? Um, could we just also point out, like, the motivate our we our villains' motivations are interesting, but again, it's not really explored very well. Mm. Like, it's kind of like okay. Here we here we are on this one. Like the idea of like the whole knowledge thing. Like you kind of like, even though like um like this I don't even know her name I can't remember her name but I know Kate it's Blanchett. Kate yeah it's Kate Blanchett her whole thing she talks about like how with the power of the skull they can control people's minds and like shit like that but you can tell she's well you you kind of learn she's just in it for the knowledge for her personal gain and like toward the end like her whole that whole little nice little speech she gives Indy about like being able to control the minds of men is totally worthless in the end, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, so I feel like they had this concept there, but just did not, I don't know what happened or why, but they did not explore it well. So she doesn't make a lot of sense. And in the, in the, in the end, she's just there to be the replacement for the Nazis in like the old indie movies. Mm-hmm. Even down to getting her face scorched, I guess we could say. She, I don't know. Well, she she disintegrates. Wait, yeah. And is, like, taken to another dimension, possibly? Possibly, She, as- yeah. she ascended. Really but I, I, I kind of liked that she was in it to, like, learn the secrets of the universe. Yeah, and I liked even that. that. Like, a very sort of Lovecraftian moment near the end where she's, like, learning these things and she's, like, tortured with this knowledge before disintegrating. I hear where Olivia's coming from, though. I feel like the character could have been communicated better. I feel like the villain in the first one, for example, like, his... Like, I mean, there's a couple of people who could be seen as the villain, but, like, you know, Indy's rival who kind of, like, keeps stealing the stuff that you see in, like, the first... You know, even in the first scene he shows up. Like, it, it, very clear motivation with that character. Very clear character with that. I feel like with uh, this movie, it really takes a while to get to the point with her. It takes a while to get to yeah, the point no. in anything in this movie. <laughs> yeah. No. Also, her character design is, like, identical to the Baroness from the G.I. Joe cartoon. So, <laughs> just with yeah. The sh- yeah, just with a bob cut. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a couple of characters that look like her, honestly. This- it's a very common trope, I feel, for, like, yeah. female bad guy characters, you know? Yeah, yeah. Es- like especially, that, that... like... Especially if they're in the military or anything. Sort of, like, Cold Cold War era. Yeah, military. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, Cold War era, especially. Like, it's, it's, it's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> so what time period do you think they're going to jump to for Indiana Jones 5? Is it going to be the 70s, the 60s? I have my doubts in Dana Jones 5 is going to happen. Um, it could. I'm not saying it won't. I am very sure we have not seen the end of Indiana Jones. I think Indiana Jones has become like a pop culture staple that will never go away. Like even if Harrison Ford's gone? Yeah, like yeah, eventually def- they'll yeah. like reboot this. They'll find another one. That's actually I, something. I, 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 could, I could see them doing the female reboot. Um, thing with this I, I honestly could if they make Indiana Jones 5 they probably will do that Harrison Ford is really old right now they'll probably have like if they make it while he's still around they'll probably make him in it but like the main the protagonist is going to change to someone else well that's something I was going to bring up with Mutt Williams they were clearly trying to set him up as like the next indie right Mm-hmm. Like I if this if this film had done gangbusters, if it had made so much money and everyone loved it, there would be Mutt Williams movies starring Shia LaBeouf and Harrison Ford would like show up in the background and be like, "Ah, oh, good work, kid." Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. But I kind of feel, you know what? I'm kind of sitting here. I've been thinking about it. I'm listening to you guys. I kind of feel like I don't. Okay, I don't think they're going to do the female route because um. 
last a couple of years ago, not even a couple of years ago, they came out with the Tomb Raider movie, and that did not do well. I guess yeah, there, or like there is already female Indiana Jones. I was just gonna say, I bet you if the new Uncharted movie, like, sorry to date this episode, but if Uncharted does well, we will probably see another Indiana Jones. I'm and in my guess, it's gonna be a reboot. Here's is, what I that's my guess. Here's what I think. Right now, there is a release date for Indiana Jones 5, June 30th, 2023. I have not been following Indiana Jones 5 that long. Apparently, it was scheduled to come out in 2019 at one point. This could mean absolutely nothing. But if this is real, uh, Phoebe Waller, I might be saying the name wrong, Bridge, is is like, um, what? Phoebe? Phoebe. I don't know how to print it. Yeah, it gets probably what it is, Phoebe. Waller, Waller Bridge. She's on the main cast list, so if this is real, I really like her. I wouldn't mind her taking over. She was in Fleabag. Fleabag's one of the best shows I've ever seen. Moving on. <laughs> I'm going to have to investigate because I am I have no idea. But I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even Crystal Skull got kicked down the road a couple times. I, I remember hearing about it long before it came out yeah so like yeah. this was this was one of the first movies i was like aware of the production cycle of and i was aware of like <laughs> how long it was taking for this film to come out do you guys remember the uh frosted flakes commercial for it where it's just it the, the scene it's just the scene from the first movie and then when like Indy's grown to, like to replace the you know the weight, put his weight on it to grab the thing. His face moves up, and it's Tony the Tiger, and he's like, huh, "That was close." Oh and my was... god! Yeah, yep, <laughs> yep. That's a memory I didn't have or need any need for for a while. There it is. <laughs> that commercial was haunts all the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I gotta say, okay, can I just bring up something I was just, I've just been thinking about that kind of annoys me about this movie? Go ahead. What's that? Okay, so it's clearly aliens. Like, you yes. know it, I know it, everybody, anybody between, like, the kitchen sink knows that it's aliens. But then it's, like, right at the end, they're treating it like it's this big reveal, like, oh, it was aliens the whole time. And it's like, yeah, no shit, we knew that, like, 20 minutes ago movie, <laughs> you know? What in the like, opening scene? In the opening yeah, we, scene, they joke about, like, Roswell and Area 51. Yeah, they're yeah, in yeah. Area 51. Like, and even, not even from, like, not even from, like, the audience, like, us being like, yeah, we get that it's aliens. But, like, the cast, like, fucking Indiana Jones. They had like, a corpse of an alien. Yeah. They had the corpse of an alien already. And they're just like, these people, like, they made all this stuff. How did they do this? And it's like, well, no sh- what, do you, what the fuck do you think, Indy, you know? Yeah, it, it is some kind of ancient aliens bullshit there. <laughs> like, oh, how did these people have such advanced technology? Must have been aliens. When they, when they, oh my god, when he does the thing where he holds up the skull to, like, the wall art, where it's like, oh, they match. Oh my god, what is it? I was, I was, I was so, I was so done in that moment. I was like, oh my god, you, this <laughs> fucking movie right here, you know? <laughs> These people. It's John. John Hurt. John Hurt is uh, the the guy wandering around with the crystal skull. Oh um, yeah. Which is a little ironic because for some reason, when I was a kid, I totally thought the aliens like the the crystal skull was supposed to be like a xenomorph skull from alien i can see where you get that idea though yeah they get the long head yeah the long head and then like the very human like teeth because like you know because aliens kind of they kind of got a set of chompers that's more human looking and then like a set of like kind of more fierce looking teeth <laughs> you know <laughs> Although the aliens at the end are just kind of like the traditional gray alien. Yeah, I think that was pretty... I found that to be quite disappointing. Their skeleton led me to believe, like, much more than I what I got, you know? Yeah. I, here's the thing. Like, here's the thing. This, this is just me being a weirdo, but I either wish they went harder with it, and these were, like, straight up, like, the gray, like, big gray aliens with, like, even bigger eyes and shit, or they went 
total opposite end of the spectrum and made them super freaky, you know? Yeah. It was uh, it was very uninteresting, the design of that. Um, to say nice things about this movie, maybe you already even said them. Um, some of the sets are nice. Occasionally the shots look nice. But whenever it's like, whenever it's an action scene, it doesn't because they took a bad approach with this movie. Not to mention the lighting is fucking awful. Oh my god, I forgot to mention that. You're right. The lighting is fucking horrible <laughs> in this movie. Yeah, me. I remember you were me and you were talking about that a lot when we were watching it. Um, well, it's just like I first noticed it like in the camp scene, like John Hurt. He's just it looks like he had like a binoculars of like light around his eyes, like like almost like a, a like a tan, you know. And then yeah. I was like, but it was too bright to be that. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? And then everything was just backlit from there on out, you know. I yeah. kind of, I thought it was interesting what they did with John Hurt's eyes because like he's he's like seen into the skull and is kind of going crazy. So when you first see him, like his eyes are lit up and the rest of him is really dark. Okay, from that perspective, I didn't think about that. That is kind of cool. There is, but, but like, but there is like there, all these shots there where is. there's like light glowing around the characters, like as an outline, and it's oh, like yeah, that no, doesn't there's... that looks horrible. Like the waterfall scene. Yeah, oh my God. that was that was, I think, the worst. <laughs> and they did that in Indiana Jones, too. And it was like kind of like, you know, the waterfall wasn't the focus. They 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 just fucking got launched out of a plane. But still, they just shot a raft falling off of a waterfall. That's all they had to do. And it looked significantly better <laughs> than what they did in this movie. But they clearly tried harder in this movie. That's the sad thing. Um, they were clearly really trying to make something special here with like all the heavy effects, but it's just, man, it it didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah, I mean, like, I believe that George Lucas is someone who genuinely likes special effects and genuinely wants to make something cool with it, but it, his reliance on it just doesn't work. This was directed by Spielberg. Um, oh, oh that's yeah, as, yeah, as, yeah, as much yeah. As, as, as were the original three. But it was it was written it was written by George Lucas at least. I th- that to me just feels like George Lucas, but maybe it does. Spielberg yeah, he, might be doing. Uh, he he was too. he was probably a producer on it. So he, yes, there there are his fingerprints all over this film. This is probably more George Lucas's film than it was Spielberg's film. Well, at least we know how to blame who to blame for the lighting now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, anything else about Crystal Skull? As you said before, John Williams did a good job. Yeah, John Williams did a good job. That is, I'd even say, I'd even say this: Harrison Ford was lame in this movie. He was really good in the first three, but yeah, no, he's he's a real flat. He's he just seems tired of being Indiana Jones. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it felt like Bruce Willis in Glass to me, where it's like, <laughs> I know you can do this character, but you're not. Yeah, it, it, it's as it's Chris and I were talking about um Harrison Ford a little earlier, and the and the, it mentioned like I think the conclusion we jumped to is that Harrison Ford has been a grumpy old man even as a young <laughs> man, so him actually being a grumpy old man, he just has no energy, you know. <laughs> I was all right with him in The Force Awakens, but it's been a while since I've seen it. Um, apparently he was good in Blade the the new Blade Runner movie oh, yeah. too. Yeah, he was pretty good in Blade Runner. He came back. Both, <laughs> both significantly later sequels starring uh, Harrison Ford, where he is much better than this. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, he doesn't do a whole lot in either of those, where this, he has to be the main character. He, he plays a big role in The Force Awakens, I'll say that much. He's kind of like yeah. the old character who's the main character in that one. It kind of feels like... Kind of feels like all. Oh, I mean, I, I don't know about episode nine, but you know, episode seven, it's it's Han Solo. Episode eight, it's Luke Skywalker. Nine yeah. maybe was supposed to be Princess Leia. Yeah, I feel but like that it didn't probably happen. it was probably supposed to be, and then, uh... yeah, <laughs> that didn't pan out. No, rest in peace, Carrie Fisher. Rest in yes. peace, Carrie Fisher. Rest in peace. It's like I really feel like, like I said, I think like a lot of this, I think a lot of this is the the script is to blame a bit, but like the more, I I, I do gotta say though, I gotta give a lot of credit to um, 
I got. I do got to give give credit as far as the acting goes to like John Hurt. He was very entertaining. You know, I the guy who plays. I do not know his name, but um, Mac. Oh, Ray the, Winstone. Yeah, very entertaining. I got. I also got to get. I also got to give um, the actress who played Marion um a lot of credit, because at least like. Cause she it, was. You know, she it, was better than Harrison Ford for sure. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I was kind of, I was pretty impressed, you know? You, you, uh, no, actually, I, I agree with that entirely. She kind of had that, like, same, like, energy where she's, like, she hears something, um, she gets pissed off at Indy, Indy and her response is to start laughing hysterically. Like, that, that's kind of something that's, like, present in both the old one and the new one. There's, like, this, <laughs> there's just, like, this worn out craziness to the character that I really like. Uh, and yeah, no, honestly, it, this does kind of feel like an older version of that character from the first one, where Indy, it does not feel like that. No, yeah. So like, and then, like I said, like Child of Buff, I'll just, I'm, I'm just gonna chalk it up to it being like not great direction or you know not a great script, kind of the same with Kate Blanchett, because like I know she can yeah. do better, you yeah. know. I mean, it's like one of the. Ta- t- Take Indiana, uh, no, take Transformers 2, one of my least favorite movies. You recast Shia LaBeouf, it's not like the movie's any better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't think this movie's any better if you recast Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, he he is, he he was in a lot of shit, but I don't think he's a bad actor. No, yeah, not at all. Oh, well, do we want to wrap this up? I guess so. <laughs> it feels like it's time. All right. Um, I suppose we'll let Olivia vote first, since Olivia is our guest. Oh, um, jeez, I gotta say, <sighs> putting me on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I can make Michael go first if you'd prefer. You know, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna throw a caution. I kind of i I think Phantom Menace holds up slightly better, but that's you know. It's you know, like I said. It's like Indiana Jones is kind of fun, but I kind of like. Uh, like just kind of feel. I just kind of feel like I didn't. I guess I just felt more neutral towards Star Wars, and I think that was kind of the better feeling to have. And I kind of feel like it did better as a prequel coming or as a sequel coming back to a series. Yeah. I like, I think episode one's a better movie. I think Crystal Skull's more enter- entertaining, but Crystal, yeah. it's it's entertainment for the wrong reason. I think that the decisions, like in episode one, I feel like there's almost a good movie there, but the missteps it makes are so bad, like so big that it, it's, it turns into a movie that I can't watch. Whereas uh, Crystal Skull, it's like just a shit show the entire time and there's like very little I can give credit to a couple of cool sets couple of cool shots good music that's a and a couple of good actors but I mean like the story is stupid the uh, a lot the acting from the main character is bad the, the vi- visually it is bad for a good chunk of it I just I think I, I agree I think Phantom Menace is a better movie I give my vote to Phantom Menace man I I like completely disagree with your assessment I thought Crystal Stalk Skull was really boring and I thought uh, episode one was far more entertaining. Uh, I am going to vote episode one over Crystal Skull. Um, just because I, I... Episode one, Phantom Menace, was clearly a passion project. It was clearly the movie George Lucas wanted to make where Crystal Skull feels a little like a cash grab, like... Yeah. Like, they didn't care yeah. as much about making it. Let me say this. Let me clarify one thing. It is, in comparison to The Phantom Menace, this is not a cold, uh, cold as ice. This is not a Book of Henry. This is not a tank girl. I don't really ever want to watch this movie again. It's not, like, consistently so bad it's good. There's just so bad it's good moments in it. And I had a lot more fun making fun of it with you guys on the call. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I just, I would rather see someone try and have it blow up in their face than see someone not try, and I feel like they're trying a lot harder with Phantom Menace and it's blowing up in their face, where Christmas yeah. Go, I feel like they weren't trying near as hard. I agree. I also kind of feel like, you know how we talked about, like, that whole, like, the wink-wink, nudge-nudge kind of feeling of when they're trying to, like, poke your nostalgia 
Yeah. I feel like that was more present in indie. And I don't know. I think it's just, it's probably just me. I've just become much less tolerant of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I could agree with that. Uh, right off the bat, like, you know, there is things that Phantom Menace are doing to, like, kind of, like, wink, wink. Espe- again, I, I especially yeah. felt nope. that with Anakin. But I think, as a whole, it creates so much new shit for this movie. It, it wanted to, like, yeah. do so much new shit. And a lot of it didn't work, but it's it, it's pretty different from the original trilogy. No, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, what, did the, what did the audience vote? Yeah, audience vote is for tiebreakers, and there wasn't really a way for us to tie this episode, but uh, the the audience is w- uh, in agreement with us. In possibly the widest margin we've had, it's 75% Phantom Menace to 25% <laughs> Crystal Skull. That's Damn. 63 votes. Holy crap. So, I, okay. overwhelmingly, episode one has it, which yeah. I... I was kind of unsure going into this, but after watching them, I'm like, yeah, no, it's definitely episode one. <laughs> I'm surprised. I thought I was. I thought I was gonna be on the back foot because you know, <laughs> for well, a lot of this. <laughs> that is that I I brought you on because I was worried about that happening because uh, I wanted someone who liked episode one in on this. Well, I'm happy to help, but yeah, I guess you didn't need <laughs> if, me if after it, all. <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it wasn't for well, you coming on, Olivia, I would have just fucked with Matt and said, Jar Jar is the best fucking character. <laughs> this is the best movie I've ever seen. Oh no, my presence was definitely a mistake then. <laughs> nah, I, I think you brought interesting discussion to this. Oh no, this was great. This, this, this was a fun one. Thank you for coming on, Olivia. Thank you guys uh, we, for having me. <laughs> we, we definitely want to have you back for some like comic book stuff since that's the type of thing you know about oh yeah my domain I how was the duck versus spider verse <laughs> let's go i didn't i didn't say star wars episode one wins yeah. yay <laughs> um so next time on hollow victories kind of two odd films i think you could definitely argue neither of these were poorly received but i think it i think it'll generate interesting discussion at the very least um we're picking these movies a for the discussion i think it'll be very funny to talk about and b because we are having another guest on next episode oh shit it's the care bears movie versus my little pony and we will be joined by our very dear friend, Mitzi. Well, Michael's very dear friend, Mitzi. I'm dating them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I wasn't sure if we were doing that or not. I Cool. I, well, I asked them the other day if they still wanted to do it, and they said yes, so uh, we're, we're still going to go through with it. All righty. Uh, Hell yeah. <laughs> there, there were plans to do this episode in person that fell through, but we're still, we'll still do it. Um, yeah. Well, Olivia, where can people find you? Well, people can find me on the channel Smash Pack. I do a segment called Out of Ink where I talk about comics. So please come check that out if you have any interest. Thanks for having me aboard, guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. Um, Michael, any final thoughts? Um, I'm. <laughs> Sex won't be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, it will. <laughs> Do I have to watch uh, all the Care Bears and My Little Pony stuff now, like I did with Indiana Jones? No, just the movies. <laughs> well, there's not really other Care Bears make. stuff. There's you not really make, heavy make. continuity there, you know, in the old I, ones. I was joking. You can't make me do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for my co-host, Movie Mackle, I am Matt Presents. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.